The market crash of 2008 scared many investors away from stocks and forced all of us to reconsider how much risk we're willing to take with our money. In her new book, The Ten Commandments of Money, author Liz Weston says that risk is impossible to avoid, and the sooner investors realize this, the more successful they'll all be with their money. Thanks for joining us, Liz. It's great to be here, Jack. So we get a lot of questions from users. What can I do to put my money in a safe place? You say that's a dangerous question in some ways. It really is because there's no such thing as a risk-free investment. If you find a safe place to put your money like an FDIC insured bank account, you're going to be losing ground because you're not going to keep up with inflation. If you add in taxes to the equation, you are losing purchasing power. So really, if you want your money to grow, you have to take at least a little bit of risk. And those of us who want to get to retirement someday and actually quit work have to take more than a little risk. So instead of just focusing on the market risk that whacked 50% off the stock market, there's also inflation risk, which you can't see, but it's still there. And recently, of course, ultra-safe bonds have proven not so safe. Yeah, and that's the scary thing, because people were sold this idea if they put their money in bonds, everything would be fine. And sometimes the bonds were misrepresented. And then there's what's going on in the general bond market, which is that you know we're seeing a situation where people's investments are losing value just because of what's going on in the market. That's one of the myths that you blow up in your new book. And another one is, it's kind of on the opposite side, is this idea if you're super young, you don't really need bonds at all, the stock market in the long term always goes up so you can put all your money in stocks. Why is that a myth? Well, it, people had this idea that there was no risk in stocks if you just hold on to them long enough. And that is actually almost true. See, what happens is if you have a holding period of 30 years, in the past and so far, you've gotten a return of about at least 8%. So in other words, if you can hang on long enough, even through periods like the Great Depression where 90% of the value was knocked off stocks, if you can hang on long enough, you will get not only back to even, but you will make a decent return. But that's a long holding period. And also, it doesn't mean that any individual stock is safe. Any individual stock can go to zero. So you want to be properly diversified. And the key is if you can hang on, because what people tend to do is at the worst possible moment, they can't hang on and they sell, right? Yeah, think about March 2009. A lot of people just bailed. They just could not take it anymore. The losses on losses and you know, bad news on bad news. And they just thought, I just can't handle this. Well, what they did was essentially sell at the bottom. And if they'd hung on, they would have come back with it. But what you need is to have a diversified portfolio with some bonds and cash, because that will give you the fortitude to wait out these swings in stocks. It helps cushion your portfolio. So given what's going on with the bond market right now, is there a particular area that you think people ought to concentrate their bond holdings? I really think people need to look at their long-term goals and actually work with a professional, hopefully, to get an asset allocation that works. I mean, I know a lot of people have to do it themselves. And my recommendation is if you are stuck doing it yourself and you don't have a financial advisor you can trust, go with a lifestyle fund, go with a target date maturity fund that will do most of the heavy lifting for you. Okay, now, what we've just been talking about is asset allocation, but that brings us to another myth, that asset allocation eliminates risk. Can you explain why it doesn't? Yeah, asset allocation reduces risk, but it does not eliminate it. And what a lot of people thought for a long time was asset allocation helps your return, that somehow they were gonna make more money in the long run. What asset allocation is meant to do is to cushion the drops in your portfolio and give you some you know, more stability, but it's not gonna eliminate the ups and downs. You're gonna to have to go through periods like we just went through where everything went into the toilet at once and it was really frightening. But again, if you hang on, typically these asset allocations or these asset classes perform differently. So when one thing is up, the other thing won't be doing so well. When one thing's not doing so well, something else will be up. That's the whole idea behind it. Very useful. Thanks very much, Liz. Thank you, Jack. And thank you for joining us.